Hey, yo guys, I'm excited. I'm about to meet one of my role models. His name is Mr. Ian Fur. Now, he started in the recording business and then he moved on to start a couple of other businesses. Some failed, most of them succeeded. Today, he was able to build an empire that is worth over 200 million, which is called Sobe, which employs so many beautiful women. And um, we are at his head offices. Come through and uh, meet this great man with me. Wow. Hi. <laughs> How are you? Good afternoon, sir. Great. How nice are you? to meet you after all these years. Wow, 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 wow. Now, the reason why I'm excited because I'm not only in a room with a giant, I'm not only in the presence of greatness, I'm in a room with somebody that I can identify with, somebody who started his journey from the recording business. And today he's built a formidable empire worth hundreds of millions and just in the beauty industry. But um, he is what is called a serial entrepreneur and he refers to himself as a serial entrepreneur because he started out a couple of businesses. Some failed and you know um, some of them have succeeded and uh, it's quite an honor to have you on Kicking Door, sir. Thank you very much. It's a great pleasure to be here with you. For people who don't know in Kenya, in Nigeria, who are watching us right now, what is the Sobe brand? Well, it's a group of beauty salons and hair salons and sorbet men, men's grooming, nail bars. We have 172 salons throughout the country at the moment. And fortunately, we've also just opened up in the UK. We've got two stores there. So the journey begins again in London. So it's not only, so when you're saying grooming, and when you say male and female, yes. so you take, you're talking many, pedi, massage. Yes, all of that. Hair, everything. That's right, facials. Manny's, pedis, waxing, massage, and then of course hair, it's mainly styling, blow wave, wash and blow type of styling. Nails is a huge part of our business, and of course men's grooming is a relatively new facet for us, and we already have seven sorbet man stores out there. If there's a man who's empowered so many beautiful women all over the country, now the prerequisite is not beauty, it's just talent, because this is, by the way, training center, yeah, you train Yeah, this is them? a training center, right, yeah, yeah. We have many, many people that are coming through the doors and being trained in, in manicures, pedicures, and all the different things, and hairstyling, barbers are being trained here as well. We, we have our So Foundation, which is a Sorbe Empowering Woman Foundation, which is specifically formed to, to help um, nail technicians, you know, previously unemployable women who weren't able to get any kind of employment and now have been educated to become nail technicians and they can go out there and make a good living for themselves. How many people does the Sorbe group employ? We have well over 2,000 people now. Wow. Yeah. Predominantly women, but some men as well. But how did your journey start into entrepreneurship? So I'm going to take you many years back into the days of the apartheid regime, yes. when South Africa was not what, it, what we know it to be today. Well, at first, um, I was in the music business, funny enough, um, working for Gallo Records back in 1975. I'd been there for a little while, and my older brother came back from America, he said, we have to open a business called Kmart, which he had seen in America. And he said, we need to open that. I was very young, I was 22 years old, I was quite naive, I didn't know much about anything. But we decided to go ahead and, and that was our first business and my first entrepreneurial venture. And we aimed it at the predominantly lower income market. So we were had, you know, we had all black staff, all black customers, and I was the single white boy in the crowd. Uh, and that was a hell of a learning experience for someone at the age of 22 years old. And and and. How did you get out of the music industry and what made you think you can move on to the next venture and succeed? Well, in fact, what happened was that my older brother and I, who had started the retail company, came out originally. And that business had started to grow quite significantly. He invited me to come back and help him. So I sold up my record company interest and I went back into retailing. And then we built that company up. It became Supermart because we had to change our name from Kmart because the Americans took us to court. It was, I was a bit naive when I was young about trademarks and logos and things like that. Anyway, we lost the case and we changed to Supermart. And then about um, eight, nine years later, we then sold Supermart to the Edcon Group. It's now called Jetmart. It's part of the Jet Group. Oh. Yeah, Jetmart used to be Supermart, which used to be Kmart, which, yes. which opened up in... 1976, in the heat of the Soweto uprisings. 
and 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 what was the difference in doing business back in those days and after 1990 or and after 1994 i think the most important thing for me was the political environment you know most of us young white boys had been very protected from what was really happening in south africa and and all of these businesses exposed me to people that i would never have been able to interact with before and i learned so much and i became fairly politicized without getting too involved and i started to change my style of management and the way that i saw business i started to understand that you need to and to look at the socio political environment in which you are living and in which your staff are living to be able to understand their behavior and how to manage people so that became a bit of a thing for me i looked at the human resource side of the business and i looked at what was really happening in south africa and the impact it was having on my staff and their living conditions outside of the business changed my style completely from a top down management hard approach to a, a bottom up what i call servant leader approach where you are there to now build and to nourish and to nurture people rather than to manage them from the top down yes would you say that's what makes businesses succeed because my next question is going to be what is the key to um you know to make it to build to to building a successful business people it's all about people so if you can get the people right that's why i always say you must put people before profit you must come to work to serve not to make money and servant leadership and all of these things if you put them all together you create the culture at sorbay we call that the soul of sorbay and it's really about being able to to build a competitive advantage out of the culture of your business in other words if you can get people to feel happy and comfortable and content and you show them that you genuinely care about their development and about their lives they become motivated by themselves you don't need to you can't really motivate somebody but you can inspire them to motivate themselves so you try and build a working environment in which people will feel uh, content and comfortable and hopefully that will then help them to to motivate themselves and if you do that you then get a positive attitude coming through from the staff and i believe that it's all by one of our most important competitive advantages is the positive attitude of our staff and i think that's what has built our business people become loyal to those staff members who have really gone out of their way to serve them well because they understand that the purpose of work is to serve from the recording business side how did you get into the beauty business how did you start sobe well i think the important thing for me was i've always moved from one industry to another just as you have done um and you know people ask me why didn't you stay and just do what you did best and repeat that again perhaps with a different flavor not really for me it's much more exciting to go into a new industry fresh and you're not uh, tainted by the conventional wisdom of that industry you come with fresh eyes people tell you what you cannot you know what you can what you cannot do but at the end of the day you have to come with your own views and do a little bit of pioneering and if necessarily you know try and sort of challenge the status quo of that industry that's what inspires me is how can i change this industry not how can i follow it mm. yes because a lot of people would expect a, a female entrepreneur to get into yes. the beauty industry and now they're quite disappointed when they see me <laughs> <laughs> and, <laughs> what did this old guy have to do with the beauty industry but how tough was it though It was tough in the beginning very very hard you know sorbe was also an interesting name yeah. for the first 4 or 5 years people thought we were an ice cream brand. ice cream brand yeah, yeah, yeah an ice cream brand and we'd go to the landlords and they'd say no we already have milky way and we don't need any more <laughs> ice cream shop <laughs> and so it was quite challenging but after 4 to 5 years we finally managed to franchise our business and from then it started to move well and now these days we're opening about 3 to 4 new salons per month now you you employ over 2000 people yes the importance of giving back yes. and the wonderful work that you do in helping other people your philanthropic activities yes well i think it's important for any business to you know to do that i don't think we're doing anything dramatically different but we do feel that there's a lot of people out there who just don't have an opportunity and the greatest gift in life is you know is giving somebody the opportunity to fulfill their potential 
And that potential, sadly, is lying wasted amongst millions of people who never got the opportunity for an education or for proper employment. So we have many of our salon assistants and cleaners that we've upgraded. We've educated them to become nail technicians and now they have a really good earning capacity and they're able to live much more functional and normal lives. Yeah, because I walk into your head offices and I'm seeing just training centers, chairs, salon stuff, and I'm thinking, yeah. isn't this supposed to be a head office? And then the girls, the ladies are, are telling me, you know, this is where we train unskilled yeah. people and we turn them into skilled exactly. laborers. Yeah, I know we do that all the time and, and we're very proud of, of our ladies who have really gone out there and made a difference. They become employed in our stores and, and we get wonderful feedback from our guests. You know, we call our, our clients our guests and we get fantastic feedback from our guests about the new ladies that have now been employed there. So it's, it's very heartwarming. You know, the success is not about money. Yes, it's about the contribution you make to other people's lives. And I've always, perhaps I didn't believe that when I was 22 years old, yeah. but having now 40 years of experience as an entrepreneur, I've changed my view of success completely. And it's now about the contribution you make for others as opposed to enriching yourself. That's Mr. Ian Fur. Now remember the name. If you don't know, if you're in Kenya, Nigeria, you're going to be seeing Sobe um, all over the world very soon. It's already started. It's outside of the continent already. It keeps growing in leaps and bounds. He started it with nothing. Remember, he started from the recording business, so it is possible. Now before I let him go, I'm going to ask him to do, um, to do us our famous 60 seconds to success. This is where you give our entrepreneurs 60 seconds advice and you look straight into them on the camera. Your 60 seconds starts now. Okay, so thank you for that. So you don't go into business to make money. You go into business to serve the needs and wants of people. And if you do that well, I think you'll make lots of money. So as an entrepreneur, you need a couple of important things. You need to have intuition so that you understand you know, what is right even without evidence to prove it. You need to have courage. You need to have determination for the long haul because there is no quick fix. You have to have stamina to see things through. And you have to believe inherently that the purpose of life and work is to serve people. Our Elon Musk, our Mark Zuckerberg, our Richard Branson, our Steve Jobs, our Bill Gates, our, you name them. And um, I've been blessed to be sitting next to this man. Thank you very much. God bless you, sir. Thank you.